Uh, making a response video might be interrupted. Who knows? Blah 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 blah. Um, so comments on the value style videos to Hothler Day, and um, you know they're just totally not responsive to the video. But I'll read it anyway. And uh, it's, you know you do have to argue with these people who just won't stay on the subject. But I tend to think they're religious nuts, and so that's why they won't stay on the subject. Anyway, okay, so uh, here we go. This Amet Reloads guy posted a whole long comment, lots of interaction with some other people, but, um, you know, just the basic nihilist crap. Same old, same old, in other words. Uh, it doesn't matter to me stuff, where that's not what the, that's not the theory of the video. The theory of the video is, you know, put quite simply again, you know, the things you have to argue with is my observed fact, okay, that I feel, and that, um, I see intrinsic and fundamental value in the states of my feelings, comfortable versus uncomfortable. I understand that the other sentient beings are fundamentally doing the same thing I'm doing, which is processing the world and turning it into these feeling things, and that they also have states of feel good or feel bad. And I do the two plus two mathematics of realizing that it doesn't really matter which one of the brains is producing feelings. It's all feelings. The, the product produced, the feelings, are the feelings. It doesn't matter really who's making them at the, any particular moment. It just means that there's value intrinsic in these feelings being produced. And so as you look at the world, you can just see the feelings, if you look hard enough, uh, the, the vapor trail, so to speak, of the feelings. You can understand that there's feelings happening in these sentient organisms and as you understand, as I understand clearly from my experience with these feelings things, they have intrinsic value. Now somehow you have to say to me it's illogical or irrational or nonsensical for me to experience feelings and then say they don't mean anything. I just think it's ludicrous. I don't think you can do that. I think it's crazy. It's a crazy claim. I don't think you have any evidence to back that claim up. I don't think it's true in your own brain. Anyway. The only broken leg that matters objectively to me, again, again matters to you, matters to you. I, the argument I'm making is that feelings, okay, feelings, um, have value. That it means something when something feels. That's the, the claim being made. You want to say it doesn't mean anything, okay, fine. You can say that, but I'm not talking about what matters to you. I'm saying that feelings are important, that they're distinctly different than non-feelings. That a rock, you can hit it with a hammer, it doesn't matter. A sentient, you don't hit it with a hammer because it matters. There's a difference between the two things. Something different will happen to the feeling thing, and the difference is that it'll have this negative experience. And I've had the negative experience. I know it's negative. It's negative. I've had it, I know it, and it's worth not having it if you can avoid it. That's the simple logic here. You're not going to unveil that or you're not going to break that down by just making some claim about what matters to you. Um, is my own broken leg. <clears throat> Again, so you're not, you're not being a philosopher then, realistically. I mean, to talk about what matters to you, okay, is not doing philosophy because you're you is playing in a field, a game, with all these other things. Again, if you just can't even acknowledge the fact that your sentience is the only sentience on Earth, there's no reason to have a conversation, is there? Is, it, is there any point in me having a conversation with somebody who thinks they have the only consciousness on Earth? All the other people's broken legs matters objectively only to them. Again, the idea of somebody saying, it matters, you don't need somebody to say it matters. What I'm saying is, is whether somebody says it matters or somebody doesn't say it matters. What I'm saying is, is my feelings matter whether I say they matter or not. The experience of them has intrinsic and fundamental value created by their qualitative flavor. Um, suffering, torture, horrible pain is intrinsically and fundamentally negative in value and comfort being relieved of such blight 
is fundamentally positive. Fundamentally, intrinsically, that's the theory. I can't see it any other way. It seems quite obvious to me. And your statements aren't going to change my mind. I mean, I, I'm experiencing the feelings again. How, how are you going to tell me I don't know what feelings are? I'm having them. Are you going to tell me I don't know what a feeling is? Sorry. There's no objective logical reasoning. Well, again, I think that I've just pointed out the objective reasoning. I think I've pointed out the, re the, the simple logic. I'm sentient. I'm feeling. Wow, feelings are incredibly, bizarrely, intensely meaningful in the sense that they have a flavor. They have an obvious weight. There's obviously a difference between very comfortable and very uncomfortable. There's a huge difference, and I can recognize the difference, and the difference has value written all over it. There's no difference except for the value difference. The fact that one is bad and one is good. And without the words good and bad, I would have no way to make a distinction. It wouldn't matter then. But they have the words written all over them. So that's not logical reasoning. Uh, that you could use to derive an obligation. Well, I guess with the word obligation doesn't really mean anything philosophically or anything. Okay? Uh, I'm just saying that it, unless you're going to be a, do bad math or be a hypocrite or be, um, you know, it, 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 unless you're going to be duplicitous to the logic, there's no way to avoid this sense of obligation in the sense that if you're going to avoid negative sensations for yourself um, and you've conceded that the other organisms are functioning as machines just like yourself, then it just is rationally, logically sensible to acknowledge that if it's a negative thing when it's inside your brain, it's a negative thing when it's inside their brain, and you're rationally apportioning, trying to avoid negative, that you would avoid negative in the other machines also. It just is logical. Now, if you don't think logic is an obligation, that's your prerogative. I think logic obligates. Uh, to prevent the broken legs of other beings, especially when placed in hypothetical dilemma where it's either my pain that is going to occur in exchange for their pain. Um, so, you know, people have engaged him in conversation about this, does that mean that you wouldn't um, sacrifice yourself for your own daughter or something? Um, but yeah, there's lots of scenarios. Um, and the fact that we're selfish is, you know, is, is, is an element of this argument that sometimes we can't do the right thing because we're too fucking selfish. But I'm just saying as a, as a logical equation, if you were watching this as players playing the game, you would say, well, that player really didn't play the game quite right. You know, when, you know, he, um, he wasn't the best player and he took the shot kind of thing. Uh, the argument could be made if he really cared about winning, you know, he would have passed the ball to the guy who had a better chance of making the shot. Um, are there pain in exchange for my pain? I have yet to hear you offering a sound justification. Well, again, the whole video was justifications that you haven't. Um, counter argued at all. You didn't argue a single claim made in my video. <laughs> you know, so you know, you you saying I have yet to hear. I don't have. I I can't. I can't do it any more obviously and overtly than to sit there and tell you explicitly. I am conscious. I know. I have conscious experience. This is my description of what consciousness is. Now, if you're going to tell me my description of consciousness is wrong, then go ahead. But you're not doing that. Uh, other than your emotional pleas, so they're, they're not emotional pleas, they're just rational statements of recognizing and acknowledging that I have feelings. That's not an emotional, me saying I have feelings and that other sentient beings have feelings and experiences and that those experiences uh, intrinsically um, have meaning in the sense value weight in that the, the experiences have value built into them through the natural process. Now you want to say it just, okay, you, if you want to say it doesn't matter whether somebody's being tortured or eating a cupcake, you can say that, but I, could, I can't find any logic to that. I can't find it through my own experience for certain, but I can't even find it as a theoretical possibility. 
and what could identify as emotional blackmails. Well, <laughs> again, there was no emotional blackmails in the video. Quote an emotional blackmail that was in the video. Uh, the, the, the video just simply stated that um, I, can, I have no rational reason to discount the value of the feelings in the other sentient beings. There's no rational reason to discount it. Okay, I can do it through bigotry, I can do it through dismissal, uh, a rationalization, but I can't do it through logic. There's no logical reason to say my feelings are more important than somebody else's feelings. Absolutely no logic to do that with. Um, my pain will always matter more to me. Well, again, what matters to you is not really the subject. The subject is, is what's valuable in the universe, and that was clearly stated in the video. So you want to keep talking about what matters to you, that's your prerogative, but it's not the subject of my video. So you're not arguing my video, you're just changing the subject. Um, uh, then the pain of another individual. Of course, decisions are corrupted by emotions, ideologies, religious beliefs, and other subjective value systems. I wouldn't even call some of those subjective value systems, but... Um, Regardless, the, the whole point of the video is to say there is only one value math here. There is only one value system. Okay, there's sentience in the universe, and that makes the universe different than if there's no sentience in it. If there's no sentience in it, the universe can spin and twirl and fuck up and blow up and do all kinds of silly things, and it couldn't possibly have a significance. It only has significance when it's generating something of value, and the simple argument being made is, is that sentience generates value. Experiences have value, and when they happen, value is created. That was the premise of the video. That's the axiom in the video. Now, if you want to claim that axiom is incorrect, then go ahead, and I'll just keep mocking you for eternity, pointing out that, oh, so you can't tell the difference between six, Jew six million Jews eating cupcakes and six million Jews in concentration camps. And I'll just keep pointing that out for eternity, for an infinite amount of time. I'll just keep pointing out how absolutely ludicrous the foundation of your philosophy is. Because you can't tell the difference between 6 billion people being tortured and 6 billion people being warm and comfy in a nice comfy chair and saying nice pleasantries to each other. And that makes you fucking insane. <sighs> okay. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, some, might, some might said that our emotional needs are also objective needs to us who experience them. Again, to us. Our to us. You just keep wanting to personalize what's supposed to be a discussion about the external reality of our migration through the game of life, the maze of life, the, the, the play of life. And uh, the argument being made is the living things that feel are different than the living things that don't feel. And that the difference is the ones that feel are creating value, significance. <sighs> anyway, um, okay, arbitrary is in your own, but I will include almost every personal preference or any ideological or belief system that assign arbitrary value to experiences or actions. Again, it's not arbitrary value. I mean, to, to, to say that the feeling of pain is arbitrarily negative would be idiotic. Um, to say that the pleasure of relief from burden or weight or crushing or hostility to your body is arbitrary would be ridiculous. Obviously nature built these things into us because they worked in terms of preserving and protecting and doing essentially positive things to you know this agenda of replication in the end but it doesn't matter what the agenda is it's quite obviously that this mechanism um, has a coherency in it uh, to that objective. Um, so to say it's arbitrary is just flatly ins insipid. It's quite clearly <laughs> coherent to a purpose, so it would be idiotic to call it arbitrary. But yes, you're just doing it because you want to pretend it doesn't have any meaning. Pain is negative. Pain is negative. It's not negative for no reason. It's negative because negative things are repulsive and 
ev you will evade them. And that's the whole point of the negative, is all of those negative words are tied to this destruction of bodily integrity. And um, it's been created to be intrinsically and fundamentally negative. And the biology succeeded. It created the reality of negative. Negative didn't li exist in the universe until the biology created the sensations of pain and suffering. The Jainists are the cannibals' emotional needs. One could argue that they also matter to them objectively. Uh -oh, again, I, I didn't use it, the word objective in the video. Um, you want to play this game? There's a truth, a reality. Okay? Um, it doesn't matter whether your need is a physical need or an emotional need. The only word that matters is the word need. Okay? The only word that matters is you will, you're in jeopardy of, of being harmed, of experiencing unpleasant sensation. It doesn't really matter what the cause of the sensation is. The only point that matters is, is that the, the desirable end in and of itself for any given instance is to avoid any waste or use of suffering that has no beneficial purpose. So if there is no purpose going to be served in the suffering, like in a dying animal, for example, a horse with a broken leg, the sensible thing to do is to um, discontinue the suffering sensation as there will be no purpose in it. There will be no function to it. It will just be wasted in, and the, uh, the experience of it will not create some function or joy in the future. There is also no logical way that you can derive universal cosmic calculator of suffering. I, I derive, I don't even know, what the, you know why you're using that kind of term. Um, whether we can calculate it explicitly is really, you know, to a fine detail, is not the argument being made. The, the argument being made is that we certainly can tell the difference between um, one Hitler eating a cupcake and six million Jews in a concentration camp and we can figure out that the happy Hitler uh, isn't worth the six million Jews in the concentration camp that the suffering outweighs the pleasure um, so we certainly know in the extreme cases and um, I don't think we need to do this and I don't think we need to do this math and anything else but a rounded off way that adds to the suffering of any being in a cosmic balance sheet well, again, the cosmic balance sheet is always going to be something um, we create. I mean, the, the cosmos doesn't have anything. We can, we're the one who has to build it. There's no cars in the cosmos until we build the cars. There's no computers in the cosmos until we be able to build the computers. So to say that we'll never be able to make any accounting for anything, that we'll never be able to say, well, gee, was World War II worth it? to ask those questions, um, certainly we can ask those questions and we can figure out whether we're running a deficit or if we're running a profit and we can do that through logic um, and so you're, 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 say, you're, you, you're making these emphatic statements that we'll never invent the car, we'll never invent the computer well I'm saying I think quite obviously we can invent such devices and this idea of taking account for the price paid for the stuff we're consuming, the lunch we're consuming. The logic being argued is that there are no free lunches. Now the argument being made, we're eating the lunch. Now let's, um, let's, let's dissect the price and see, did this lunch just cost us $5 million? And was that an insane price to pay for a mediocre lunch? Outside the realm of I say so, well again, I don't think I just said I say so. I think I just made a logical argument saying um, everything of sophistication in the universe is probably going to be associated with something that's evolving um, because that's where uh, complexity is accelerated and that if it's going to be invented we're going to have to do the inventing because there's no other mechanism in the universe that invents complexity uh, on any scale close to the complexity we can invent and quite obviously I think we can invent a Ouija board <laughs> the Ouija board, a, a whatever the Chinese addition device is called um, 
to do our little bit of math here. The suffering of humans or any other being from 550,000 years ago ended and vanished with the end of their sentient experience. So again, he's saying is, you know, every suffering doesn't matter. You could kill a, a billion people tomorrow in a horrible, awful way. And because they're going to die, um, then they'll be over eventually. It doesn't matter. It's just as good as giving them cupcakes. I mean, you could argue that if, if you're going to make this argument, then the pleasure is also likewise of no value. So again, why would you support the continuation of something that generates no value? But I, again, I'm just saying that's a, it's a ludicrous premise to say it doesn't mean anything. And if you lived by your premise, um, again, you'd have no justification for defending the existence of life on Earth. Um, because they were the only ones for whom it mattered objectively. Um, again, uh, same argument. Uh, you want to live as just a, an emotional animal. Here, here you're, you're arguing pleas to emotionalism, and you're basically saying, I wish to glorify my silly, innate, um, biological imperative to survive and pass on my sperm, uh, my genetics. I mean, I, I mean you know... Uh, Certainly, you, you want to insult your own intelligence and say you're not better than that. You're not better than a dumb animal. You might as well not have the brain. You might as well just cut off three quarters of it and go back to being a flatworm because that's as far as you wish to think. Um, even the assignment of objectiveness, so he's used the word objective is what, three, four times here already? And it wasn't said in my video. Even the assignment of objectiveness on, and he put it in quotes as if I did use the word, on the experience would trigger some to question it philosophically. I don't share that bit others do. I don't even know what that means. Even the assignment of objectiveness on that experience would trigger some to question it philosophically. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. Um, but even if bypass but even if bypassed that by some uh, majestic, phantasmagorical, um, quasi-religious bullet, you still end up in a logical dead end. That's your argument now. So, okay, let's hear your argument now. Mathematics are pretty explicit on this, no matter what model you use. I tend to doubt you. <laughs> if the universe is eternal... Let's not factor in multiverse scenario, and we'll uh, counteract and it will contract and expand indefinitely in vicious cycle for an eternity, no matter what small probabilities you assign to life in the universe like our own, against the scientific consensus that life is deterministically inevitable. Well, I, like I said, a scientific consensus, that doesn't mean anything. There's no, there's, if it's a scientific consensus, then it would mean that most scientists don't understand the laws of probability and don't understand that you can't know a circumstance of indeterminate variables um, from one instance, one outcome. You, there's, it has no, one permutation has no probabilistic um, information and will occur in every universe like our own given time. Then you will have an infinite amount of suffering value units no matter how many units you s subtract at any phase of the any existing universe. What any phase, that's the problem where you broke this whole scenario. So he's basically trying to argue that it's infinite suffering um, and therefore no change in infinite could possibly make a difference, right? So if you add one more somewhere in the past, if you put double holocaust, it wouldn't matter because there's an, in, an infinite holocaust in the total, so it doesn't matter. But clearly he doesn't understand the word infinite. Infinite isn't a finite thing. Infinite is an, uh, an ongoing register. So there's always a past to infinite. But the future infinite hasn't happened yet. Okay, So you can only calculate the past infinite. And clearly... If you're calculating a past infinite, if I double the holocaust, that increase exists. Okay, it will, it, it's a registerable difference in an infinitely regressive past. So there's no way to say it can't matter. 
I mean, I could just double, I could, I could just say there's two universes, you know, and one universe has one Earth in it, and one universe has two Earths in it. And they're both infinite universes. Obviously, the one with two in it is going to have twice as much of whatever Earthing is in it over an infinite amount of time. But again, infinite is only applicable in a universe that has time. And there is some possibility that this universe will end and time will cease. Anyway, um, then you will have an infinite amount of suffering value units no matter how many units you subtract at any phase of any existing universe. Yeah, again, at any phase. So again, you're just denying the fact that it is a phase and that the word infinite does not mean finite. So, um, again, you can, you will always have a point where the future infinite hasn't happened yet and so um, any doubling in the past is going to be relevant. Um, infinite minus any number, even a number big, well again, so you're playing with a number as if infinite has a number. You can't you can't plus and minus an, a non-existing number. It's not like three point, you know, infinite decimals. Infinite isn't a number. You, you can't play with it that way. Um, this antinatalism and ethalism is not only illogical as I stated above. Well, you didn't state anything above. I mean, you played with the word infinite and pretended that if you double the suffering at any point in the, the time frame of two parallel systems that you didn't somehow double it when you did double it and it's a fact and it's registered as a fact I mean you, you know to, to pretend that to somehow infinite means that you can undouble the doubling I'd say is ar arguably ludicrous um, but it is self-contradicting as it is pointless, which verify which verified very easily. Well, again, see, so he's just saying it in big letters like it's pointless that he's proving the pointlessness. So if I had two universes and I had one universe where I blew the Earth up, and I had one universe where I didn't blow the Earth up, his argument is is that the universe where I blew the universe where I blew the Earth up is still suffering the same amount as the other universe. Not possible. Uh, why would you exchange, and on what logical basis, the futility of life, which is one of the fundamental cornerstones of ethelism in a universe without suffering? <sighs> you know, I don't know, that's too long a pair of parentheses in the middle of a... Why would you exchange and on what logical basis. So what's the logical basis for exchanging the futility of life, I don't, I don't know how I'm making an exchange for the futility of life, with another futility. Right, so he's arguing again, like I said, you know, it, it, like somehow it just doesn't matter. If you prevented the Holocaust and six million Jews dying in the Holocaust, that's a futile act because there will be future Holocausts. That's his argument. Because there's other Holocausts that are going to happen, somehow the one you prevented doesn't count as anything. That somehow an infinite universe assures that. And to me that's just completely illogical, right? You can't make things disappear because of an infinite universe. It doesn't make anything disappear. Uh, futility and the futility of trying to eliminate suffering. Um, so again, that's a convenient life you have for yourself, okay? It's like the, the people against global warming and all this other stuff. Go ahead because it's inconvenient for you to recognize the truth, okay, that what you do does matter, and uh, your selfishness is invidious and disgusting, um, because you don't want to deal with that inconvenient truth, you're just going to pretend it doesn't exist, you're going to pretend it doesn't matter, um, because you're a selfish asswipe. It doesn't make any sense, and I suspect it never will. Well, it doesn't make any sense to you. Okay, because you don't think it makes sense to recognize that your feelings have intrinsic and fundamental weight on them, built into them by nature, and that when you look at the world, 
it's reasonable to concede that the other sentient beings are doing substantially the same thing you're doing, which is having experiences that are decidedly positive and decidedly negative in their substance. That doesn't make sense to you. Fine. You're an idiot. I don't know if there's anything else. Do I really need to go any further? It's like the hospital day video. Once you get halfway through and then he starts talking about the matters to me crap, you're just like, well, I thought you conceded that the value was being created into an ether. You said the words. The ether isn't a place that matters to you. The ether, the place where the experience is placed as a just a placeholder, an accounting paper, a uh, metaphorical accounting sheet isn't made out of you. You don't have anything to do with the accounting paper. So your matters to me thing doesn't mean anything. Why should I? Um, again, you should only do, if you don't think the accounting sheet matters, if, like I said, if you don't think, if you're running a business and you don't think it matters whether you're making a profit or running a loss, that's your prerogative, but I'm saying you're doing bad business then. Um, you're missing the point. Uh, you're off the subject. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's enough. I, I mean, I, you know, I did go to his channel page and it is just curious. So, so this video he's featuring is some boner joke video, you know, where a guy has a fake boner and goes to a table and, you know, you know, he is and has it here, you know, of, you know, he's a waiter, no less. So they do this in a f food service place. I, you know, just that, those kind of, whatever you call those kind of jokes, uh, puns, whatever. Uh, jeez. There's some video I don't remember seeing that has me in it with a flag, which is kind of creepy. I don't like the flag thing at all. Well, maybe I'll see what that hell that is. But anyway, just crap videos. He's a jerk. Yeah. An idiot. Moron. Fuck that.